morning uh, and welcome uh, this session uh, moderator is right now not here but uh, i can just tell you the intentions of this uh, uh, this session uh, that he actually wanted to uh, tell you that is uh, doing turning from a refractive cataract surgeon to a refractive surgeon purely was what he wanted to impress that uh, a person uh, nowadays who is doing cataract needs to also uh, become good at refractive surgeon because that is the need of the hour now so not wasting any more time my topic is do your basics right patient selection choosing eye wells and proper insertions in cataract surgery and uh, it's a vast topic i don't know if i can do justice to it but then i'll try need technology and reality cataract surgery is a refractive surgery no distinction between refractive surgeons and cataract surgeons the reason is because now our eye wells are not just for vision but uh, to carry on multitasking and i call them lifestyle eye wells patients expectations that they would see everything at all distances without loss of any contrast sensitivity and without any post operative complications so that's it uh, eye well that would suit all their needs and we have the market flooded with premium eye wells and it continues to research and development continues it continues to grow but the truth is there is no definitive eye well which would suit all surgeons and all patients so we need to actually make our own structure and find out the best in our hands and best for our patients and we have to remember that with the same treatment two different patients might have variable response and the reality is to narrow down on the patient the eye well and the company or technology we actually believe in and we are good at so in patient selection the first thing that we do is chair, uh, give more chair time to understand the personality of the patient the need of the patient and have to ex not just the need but how have to match his work a patient who is driving cannot be given a multifocal without explaining that he would be having glares and halos uh what he actually needs unaided or aided vision you have to understand that the health of the eye you have to understand there is no nirvana you cannot have perfect lens perfect operation in the way that we actually have had in our natural lens that has not, so we should undersell that but again not just uh, over uh, we should not just uh, because of that we should not avoid excellent operations uh, which are giving good results with refractive lenses the projection of our confidence is what the patient chooses from and we better choose a optimistic patient who is realistic and is not very exacting type uh, especially for premium eye wells like multifocals going for eye well choice again the patient's perspective is the most important the work the ocular conditions uh, angle kappa which is very important we have to remember that and the standard assessment test helps us like visual acuity refraction topography biometry and shermer test for dry eye which is very very important because even after a very good surgery a dry eye would give you a big headache from the surgeon's perspective the technology you believe in the technology which works best in your hands and there are lots of lenses monofocal multifocal accommodating so you choose your lens correctly according to the incisions that you make the sphericity the toric corrections final choice is yours on literature search by the mentors what have they uh, taught you uh, your wisdom and your experience some diseases like corneal and uveitis we better avoid very premium lenses like multifocals and because of the higher order refraction these patients might still have problem even after multifocal so i usually exclude them and put them on aspheric monofocal lenses i explain that you might have a corneal edema or need a keratoplasty later on even after a good surgery and uh, when the ciliary muscle is diseased like ca uh, cases of synechia or inflammation which develops from uveitis or advanced diabetes i better avoid a premium lens and of course a aspheric monofocal lens is very good because it uh, uh, we have to of course uh, tell the patient that they are not complete uh, contraindications but we have to tell the patients that these lenses would create problem so good for uh, aspheric monofocal lens for retinal issues again which we confirm by oct uh, multifocal lens is avoided because a perfect macula and neurological system is required to counteract the aberrations which are produced by the multifocal lenses and uh, also in glaucoma the same rule is followed 
because the contrast sensitivity is lost a little bit by the these lenses a monofocal optic will maintain the maximum quality of vision here astigmatism we all know greater than 1.5 we opt for a toric lens monofocal or multifocal some of the pearls are are very accurate biometry i do it on optical and immersion if possible do it on the day when i'm not doing any procedure in the eye and ask them to avoid contact lenses at least 2 weeks before i do the measurement especially for premium lenses high corneal astigmatism we have to explain that they might need a laser top up at a later date so uh, this is a this is i did a slit lamp marking now i have switched over to slit lamp marking the different ways of marking with markers and different other systems it's in the app or uh, there's image guidance system on table i prefer to do a slit lamp marking pre operatively because on table there is a cyclo rotation so especially the horizontal axis is marked very well so this is it this was marked in slit lamp the horizontal axis and reconfirmed on the table the 0180 i prefer a, a temporal incision and uh, i just reconfirm it and this uh, place, uh, lens had to be put at 90 degree so i was fortunate and uh, once the surgery was over then uh, this is how the lens was pushed uh, this was put under irrigation i've switched over to irrig lens insertion in irrigation nowadays and i maintain that uh, irrigation cannula like a ac maintainer till the time i actually position my lens and finish my hydro so this is a tip that uh, avoids the collapse of the ac after you have positioned your lenses of course the image guidance systems are a big relief uh, if you have it once you position the lens on the table this is how the callisto or varion they help you to position the lens properly so again when you're doing a multifocal i would just uh, share some few tips i always load them myself this is a multifocal and uh, about the uh, leading haptic i don't know but the trailing haptic i always put it on the optic and under my microscope i load these lenses and just let them go just behind the tip of the injector i inflate the bag completely and this is a beautiful round rexis that you actually have to have a good rexis for any premium eye wells and engage the uh, injector tip in the wound and i use a spatula in this cases to just tap the lens in and always my leading haptic i of course try not always is in the bag and i try to dial the trailing haptic this is a tip which i would like to share and uh, also the matching of the perkinjit images by uh, by look, asking the patient to look at the light if it is in topical thorough ac wash is a important step that we should do uh, uh, viscoelastic not only cause inflammation but can also disturb the position of your lens this is a tip that i sometimes would like to share that i put a cannula separately below the lens to wash out the viscoelastic behind and this is a, a normal insertion and i would like to share this pearl here that when you sometimes are in a hurry in a irrigation especially when you are doing irrigation do not leave your lens at the wound this is what i have felt is very important if you are in a hurry to withdraw your plunger this is what happens it gets engaged and then it's very difficult and this is what can happen also you might while dialing be flipping the lens upside down and all the sphericity goes fortunately for me the haptic got caught in the wound so i could dial it back and so this is one tip that uh, when you're doing irrigation deliver the trailing haptic inside the ac uh this is one tip for a multi piece i will i usually try to have a bigger wound uh not the outer portion of course inflating the bag is important and the bigger wound is this has uh, the inner portion of the wound i enter with my keratome the inner portion i enlarge a bit because here you have actually have to screw them in rather than pushing them in and while screwing it it's good that you put the tip slightly inside the anterior chamber not just at the wound and let your uh, leading haptic actually go inside the bag so that makes your life easier and delivering it on the irish the trailing haptic you can dial it very easily a tip uh, regarding the when you're using a pupil expander like a hook or a behex you might want to use a spatula i use a spatula to tap the lens in so that it does not get engaged with the expanders so that's it and 
so however difficult life may seem there is always something that you can do to succeed patient selection informed consent and realistic expectations are parameters for successful post op results i welcome you all to the aioc 2024 kolkata and the registrations of that are open kindly visit hangar c get yourself registered because till 14th of may you will be having a discount so kindly come and you're welcome to the city of joy next year thank you so much for patient hearing good morning everybody after uh, sudeepta's excellent talk i think the expectations are very high on me now <laughs> so right uh, so my talk is basically for uh, i mean pearls for a, a surgeon who is transitioning from a normal phaco emulsification onto the femto assisted cataract surgery so i have basically divided this topic into various uh, headings pre operative considerations pupil management capsulorexis hydro dissection nucleus removal and irrigation aspiration so when i was transitioning to a femto cataract surgeon way back in 2017 these were my observations and then you know this is the uh, process i followed which i would like to share with all of you I always feel that we must add NSAIDs preoperatively to minimize intraop meiosis because uh, when we dock the I the IOP uh, suddenly increases and as a result you always find uh, find intraop meiosis in these cases. Ideal pupillary dilatation should be approximately seven millimeters when you start off the femto cataract surgeries and head should slightly be turned away. from the surgical eye so that there is easier docking and the patient interface placement becomes much easier now this is a video which will just show you how after after the docking the 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 uh, femto cataract system how it works so for, first of all the as oct starts its function and all the anatomic landmarks are identified in the eye we can manually adjust the uh, uh, docking system in the x y or the z axis as we desire is this working yeah so as you can see here the anterior segment oct is trying to identify the limbus the pupillary landmarks and also the uh, the white to white the i the um, vertical dimensions and the horizontal dimensions of the cornea i generally avoided making corneal wounds with the femto initially in the first few cases it is uh, you know perfectly okay to use the standard keratome to make corneal incisions it is very important to understand that the wounds in a case of femto cataract are more central as compared to a keratome the uh, when we make the incisions with the keratome they are more towards the limbus with the help of femto it is more central there can be gas breakthrough as you can see here when we uh, when i was making an intrastromal limbal relaxing incisions there has to be a gas breakthrough which indicates that the incision has been completely made incomplete wounds are evidenced by lack of a champagne bubble release from the anterior aspect as you can see here anteriorly the gas bubbles were not released and this indicates that these are incomplete wounds in these incomplete wounds we have to use a, a spatula or a sinski's hook to complete the dissection and enter the wounds make an ac entry which is important define the superficial extent of the wound by drying always and only then try to go inside otherwise you may disturb the epithelium sometimes you may you may create a parallel wound because uh, we may not identify the exact plane so dry the uh, the anterior aspect identify and then enter a sinski's hook can also be used to open the side ports because they are smaller incisions and may not need a bigger instrument use a sinski's hook to open the limbal relaxing incisions for a better result this is a very badly positioned femto incision because it is very central and always try and avoid making incisions overlapping a pterygium or any other limbal stem cell deficiency femto wounds need more copious hydration as compared to wounds created by a keratome 
wound whitening is very common because the incisions are central and as a result while doing irrigation and aspiration you may actually cause a lot of hydration because the placement of your tip is more vertical and not horizontal. Meiosis is very common following a femto procedure as I had mentioned so I generally always use intracameral adrenaline before I start a femtosecond assisted cataract surgery. I almost always use it even, even till date. A 5 mm capsulotomy is the preferred size. You can remove these capsule either by a dimpling method or by a circumferential movement. There is no harm in using the trepan blue dye in your first few cases because it clearly delineates your capsular excess margin. So if your uh, rexis is not complete and your tags are still attached, you can still identify and then remove it like a conventional rexis. So as I'll show you this video here. Don't lift the flap, just catch the edge of the flap and pull it circumferentially like you do a normal rexis. This is the dimple down technique. You can use a cannula, just dimple, go, go uh, till the center of the uh, rexis, tap it, create some dimples and then pull it out. We have to ensure that there are no adjacent adhesions made. That's very important. Don't catch cortex along with the capsule because that may create more problems. Just catch the capsule only. It's very important. Some people basically try to delineate the rexis with the help of visco. In this case, I had gone under the rexis and put a visco. So the flap came up and like a desec lenticule, it was stuck onto the cornea. As you can see here, the outline of the capsule, it is now stuck on the posterior aspect of the cornea. And I had to actually go with my irrigation aspiration and you know uh, aspirate the capsule. So inject OVDs above the capsule and not under the capsule. That's very important. As you can see here, there's a 25% uncut flap. So you have to go towards the margin of the uncut flap and then complete it circumferentially like we do a conventional rexis. Otherwise, sometimes you can, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, capsule uh, rexis margins can extend and you may have a nucleus drop. White cataracts almost always use a trepan blue dye. Remember that there is air in the capsular bag, so do not over inflate with the, with the hydro dissection. Always rotate and tilt the nucleus before you do hydro dissection to release these gas bubbles. As you can see here, I'll just show you in this video. It's very important. So uh, use of the, of the uh, femtosecond laser almost always creates these kind of gas bubbles in the capsular bag. So I'm gently tapping just beneath the capsular excess margins to release these air bubbles. Harder cataracts, you use more uh, 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 femtosecond laser. So you have more and bigger, larger air bubbles. So always rotate, keep on tilting the nucleus till all these gas bubbles are released into the anterior chamber. First release the air bubbles as you can see here. I'm just gently rotating the nucleus. Always, always remember that brown cataracts, total cataracts will have larger air bubbles and keep on injecting small amounts of fluid at multiple places. So do not do one or two places of hydro dissection. You should have multiple injections at various places. Lens fragmentation, you can actually make four, six or eight pieces. It is perfectly fine in the few cases to make a shallow group because this is a pre-chopped nucleus. So sometimes you want to directly go with a chopper and go for a direct chop. But then since you do not understand how this nucleus works, it is okay to make a shallow groove. I'll take, take a minute more. So this is the lens fragmentation. It generally, the uh, femtosecond laser uh, chops about 500 microns. There's 100 microns of safety margin anteriorly and posteriorly. My preferred choice is to make six pieces. P uh, you know, you can make eight or four pieces also. That's completely your choice. There has to be some amount of spacing left because that helps me to catch the nuclear pieces with the help of my probe. Vertical and horizontal spot size spacing is 40 and 10 microns. So these are default uh, settings of the company, which I haven't changed. So this is my, f I think, second or third case where I did create a shallow groove and then I separated pieces along the lines of cleavage. Confirm complete cleavage. 
just make sure that you have divided all the four or the six or eight pieces whatever you have made and then you know like a conventional FECO catch the nuclear material and aspirate them after the complete cleavage is done it is very easy to aspirate and because of uh, segmentation you will realize that the amount of FECO power you need to use for this is much lesser as compared to a conventional FECO so it does help you to have clearer cornea especially when the your uh, cataract is harder laser fragmentation can sometimes be incomplete in dense white cataracts and you may actually have to do a chop you can also use a capsular tension ring if it is indicated before you start the uh, the uh, nucleotomy. The, it's important to understand that there, okay, there are no cortical tags here and cortical margins are very very re regular. So you have to be able to differentiate between the capsular excess margin and the cortical matter margin. You may sometimes catch the rexis and pull it off. So the technique which I use here is go beneath I firstly identify the capsular excess margin I generally stain it with a trepan blue dye so it makes it much more uh, clearer go beneath the capsular excess margin try to catch the cortex and have us have a circumlinear motion so now if you are if if you have caught the capsular excess margin it will not move circularly if you have caught the cortex it will start moving circularly once you are you have identified that it is the cortex bring it to the center and then aspirate it you have to be a little more careful while doing a cortical wash in a femto cataract because your hydro dissection is not very complete here so the adhesions are much more firm and you be, have to be very careful so in conclusion what i what i would recommend for a person transitioning to a femto cataract is always add NSAIDs or a flurbiprofen preoperatively always use intracameral adrenaline to, uh, before starting the case very careful corneal wound entry try to make it with a keratome initially <coughs> pulling the capsular excess margin circumferentially or with a dimpling technique release the intralenticular air during hydro dissection by rotating the cataract adequately take advantage of the cleavage lines which have been made by the femtosecond laser and always grasp the cortical matter peripheral to the capsular excess edge Thank you very much. I hope all this will help you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And thanks to John for having me here. Correct. Yes, you will have to leave leave a little more because it, it, it may open up much more easily. Correct. Correct. So how much do you leave for a posterior polar cataract posterior? Approximately 200 to 200 microns. Yes, that yes. is one thing. And, and Secondly, another thing is in a posterior polar cataract, I generally don't go for the segmentation. I just make six pieces and I don't go for further segmentation. Yeah. So you have a lens softening uh, software also. Yeah, that is I wanted to tell you. Uh, yeah. I wanted to ask you or yeah. actually we actually do lens softening, Correct. especially for uh, cataracts which are harder. Correct. We In between the segmentation, that softening is more important. Correct. So yeah, in, uh, the division is so fine. Generally, if it's uh, a cortical cataract or a PSC or an NS1, I don't do, you know, softening. No, but it is only done for harder done cataracts. Yes, so, yeah. so basically for grade 3 and more, I go for this. And the gas cataract. bubbles, I think in the earlier machines, we were getting more. Now it Correct. we hardly no, it's, get it's gas bubbles down, yes. it's much less correct but then much I, less. I, I started in 2017 when the machines were fairly new so I used to get large air bubbles in the mm -hmm. back as I've seen now as you correct yeah said, that's it has come even down. I started 2018 so correct. there so were a lot of bubbles now. we actually had correct. to take a effort to take them out absolutely, absolutely. Nowadays, because I did have a nucleus drop initially in my uh, first you know, fourth or fifth case where I nicely did a good hydro dissection I was unable to you know release all the intralenticular gas yeah. so these gas bubbles then tend to expand and mm -hmm. They, you know, they just rupture the posterior capsule and the nucleus goes down. Another thing is you you showed a fracture, uh, refracture with the chopper or whatever. Correct. I but then uh, in a softer ones, maybe with a visco dissection, can just Correct. widen the. Correct. We can do that. I generally easy. use a ballpoint chopper now to just go along the cleavage lines and, and just separate just, just, them. It just becomes come. very easy. In very harder cataracts, especially in, in brown and whiter cataracts, we still don't have complete cleavage lines. Yes. So there you case, actually you have to do a, a bit of chopper vertical chop. Do it, do it in a conventional way. What's important to understand is that you know the femto machine makes it easier to do these cataracts. Yes. The, the but technique we actually still have. remains the same. It doesn't, you know, uh, dramatically change uh, the whole technique. You still have to be a very good cataract. Good FACO surgeon. You have to still be a yes, very good FACO surgeon to be, do, to be able to do this. So what single reason you will give to the 
to the surgeons who are thinking of converting from fico to fem to fico see there are two 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 important things in my thing that you know in my practice number one if you are doing premium iul it is it is better i will not say it is absolutely necessary or you can't do it you can still do it but i feel that the results will be slightly better you get a very central punched out 5 mm rexis so the premium iul sit very well a multifocal or a toric the chances of rotation are a little lesser one and in wider intumescent cataracts where there are there's a good chance of the rexis extending you still get a very good rexis in nucleotomy that the amount of echo power becomes a little less that that's okay you can still give clear corneas with a conventional echo so this you can achieve for the rexis you can achieve with the care group for the uh, have this uh, no, sir, if i be very honest with you a very good phaco surgeon can still give comparable results you can still the, give comparable other results other thing i was wondering for releasing the bubble right if you use uh, this uh, pre choppers which are available just separate the the cleavage lines yes yeah. the the bubbles the can bubble still come out bubble. correct yeah. it's just that i i had learnt it this way so I, i still continue to do it because we are used to you know rotate the nucleus so i just take my uh, sensky so can still rotate it and 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 just you know release the air bubbles so i learnt it this way i just continue to do it what you said is also correct you can just you know release the cleavage lines the air bubbles will automatically come out thank you for the nice presentation thank you sir thank you very much A very good morning to all of you. I'm a little down by fever, so there's a delay for the coming. I'm sorry for that. So learning is a constant evolutionary process. That's why we are here from couching to chopping, and sharing is the knowledge is the best way of learning. So the IC is made such a way it will incorporate everything to day-to-day -day practices. So I'll be discuss the how to do a good IPCL from beginner's journey to become a confident IPCL surgeon. i have no financial interest faking intraocular lens or are the clear implantable lens that are surgically placed either in the anterior chamber or posterior chamber without removing the natural crystalline lens enabling the light to focus on the retina and improve the uncorrected visual acuity why should i know these things what will be the op options if the refractive error beyond the laser vision correction faking intraocular lens are the smart answer of this scenario Faking intraocular lens demonstrate the high optical quality and potential gain in visual acuity and imp and myopia patient due to retinal magnification. Correction is not immediately limited by corneal thickness or topography. Faster visual recovery and stable refraction are expected. So faking intraocular lens is maybe angle supported or is able either supported or it may be the faking posterior chamber intraocular lens. So these are the angle supported. <coughs> <coughs> excuse me this is iris supported and this is a faking posterior chamber lens so it has been incorporated in the practice for long back stemply for 1950s so the breadth was going on so it's a time to convert incorporate the faking iul in your practice these are the angle fixed faking iul do the shape do the secondary glaucoma and shaping of the angle so it is not usually practically implemented this iris fixation this also have some its limitations so mainly we are using this things of faking posterior chamber intraocular lens so who are the ideal candidates age more than 21 years stable refraction less than 0.5 dot changes in last one year clear crystalline lens initial corneal thickness less than 44480 micron and unsatisfactory vision with a glass or intraocular lenses or contact lens and anterior chamber depth should be less than at least 3.2 mm in irish claw on angle supported or it should be at least 2.5 mm in the faking posterior chamber intraocular lens so what the ideal candidate the cell density should be good amount of the your specular count no ocular other pathology or stable keratoconus and, and post pk patient so these are the content if the patient have refractory glaucoma or evades or any inflammatory condition or retinal maculopathy is there who so what are the investigations are needed and best character visual acuity enter and, and posterior segment evaluation white to white measurement high frequency 
your ultrasound by microscopic or ultrasound ASOCD and coronal endothelial cell count and pupil diameter should be incorporated. I will power calculation, endothelial chamber depth and angle to angle dis distance between the breast obtained using the optical coherence tomography but can also be measured using the ultrasound by microscopy. Endothelial chamber depth is measured from the corneal apex to the endothelial surface of the crystal lens and is used and used to calculate the effective lens position and the faking intraocular lens by subtracting the distance between the faking intraocular lens and the crystal lens from the SCD. The effective lens power is typically 0.8 mm in the artesian and very size lens. White to white measurement with the eyewell power in the calipers can be used. Estimate the angle to angle distance. Corneal power is calculated using the keratometry or topography measurement and curvature of the cornea. To Pre-operative assessment. This is a pre-op uh, assessment for the corneal topography, ASOCD, and calculation and safety lines. So, what are the indication? The intraocular lens correction for the moderate to high myopia in patient with the thin cornea, hyperopia, high myopic astigmatism, stable keratoconus. We can use it. Post radial keratotomy and post penetrating keratoplasty. So, these are surgical procedure. So, I am just showing how to load the things video. This is most important. So. You can see you have to hold these things. There is a two hole in the upper side. It should be the correspondence of the brow, brow of the line. So this is if I want to prepare the left eye. So it should be this one, this thing. It is the correct position of the IPCL of the left eye. While in this is for the left eye. You can see the superior. It corresponds to the brow of that eye. If I am planning for the right eye, it should be like this two position should be in the lower part. So that is the most important part for loading and this is the most challenging part of the IPCL. So this is the loading of the IPCL. We have to load, I personally prefer to load by myself and I load the IPCL before inserting the patient, <coughs> taking to the patient OT. Because unless you, uh, once you enter the endo chamber, patient is lying down, patient will go over, over, over apparency. So once I load it, I just enter whole thing over in the BSS gallipot and then I start the patients. Before inserting, you should check, you should not be stuck over there. So this is one of the now how you inter, insert these things. This is a toric IPSL. So there is in one fixed axis. <coughs> you should not be overfilled the uh, enter chamber. It should be optimum. Triplanar enter chamber insertion has been done. This is very important because it has a tendency to flip off, so it should be corresponds with your that time. So, if needed, you let it prone your hand. So it should be and very slowly. You have to insert these things. Once it has been done, the aptic should be stuck over the posterior sulcus. Excuse me. And it's very easy, <laughs> but should not be hurry bari, and you should not inadvertently damage the endolens capsule. All the once it will be there, pupil should automatically by its own become the circle. If someone is, uh, some aptic if it is not stuck <coughs> in the sulcus, then it has a tendency to pupil is centering so if it is exactly in the position the pupil by its own become the circle once it has been done as usual procedure should be done the hydro of the wound so I am just showing these things when this is one of the video when inserting this thing you can see it's by its own while opening its flip off so concave surface it's become become up which supposed to be downwards.
the one rule of thumb is that you should not try to rotate it inside the AC because it will cause the inadvertent damage to the enteral chamber and it is very flexible better to remove it off and then so you can see I am not trying to be <coughs> flip just flip it off inside the things giving the visco and simply by microbeer this part is above the iris this part and by microbeer force I just release it off so don't try to be do it in the inside the entry chamber rather in, always and it is fact that whenever this person come from that they will have a backup lens also so if you have damage we have inadvertently damaged the things also they have always standby backup lens is there so post of wealth assessment the world <coughs> excuse me was measured manually as the distance between the posterior surface of the lens ipcl and the anterior surface of the crystalline lens evaluation of the world is very important as a lower world has a major risk of cataract development and higher world is a risk of the glaucoma a safe world uh, was considered 250 to 750 micron and if it is less then it is suspected the patient have developed the cataractus changes and if it is more than 1000 is forward bulging so probably there is a high chance of glaucoma so then this case you have to be exchanged the ipcl so immediate complication of the glare and halo cataract formation there is a list most common uh, probably anterior subcapsular cataract pigmentary dispersion and elevation of the intraocular pressure disintegration endothelial cell damage the long term complications are raised iop anterior subcapsular cataract and inflammation and pigment dis disorders so what's new is the bio what's bioptics is the combination of the fakic eyeball implantation followed by lasik in patient with extreme myopia or hyperopia so here we clubbed up with the lasik along with the those are the customized procedure here we are doing the lasik how much we can correct with the lasik followed by rest of the things by ipcl so this is a combination of the lasik and your ipcl when an endo chamber fakic eyeball is placed to be combined with the lasik the coronal flap can be created just prior to the insertion of the lens and then at later time usually after one month the flap is lifted laser correction and residual amyotropia this two step technique was called adjustable refractive surgery by the gul and the rationally in the performing the flap first to be avoided impossibility of the contact between the endothelial cells and the eyeball during the suction and cut the lasik procedure so these are the these what are the drawbacks it's a patient has to go through the some intraocular procedure post op astigmatism glare and halos angle closure glaucoma progressive endothelial cell loss chronic uveal inflammation lens displacement and cataract and pigmented honestly speaking i have been last since 2017 so or 18 to probably very rarely as of now as of now not not showing any this type of complication i have encountered during my practice so what's the ipcl versus icl i am not going into this because dr bina already already highlighted this thing so one thing i just highlight the ipcl is much much predictable and less side effects compared to the icl and is freely available cost effective and uh, less chance of glaucoma because it's already eight holes are there which causes the free aqueous uh, flow from the posterior chamber to anterior chamber so ipcl definitely superior and the wide range of correction it correct the up to plus 10 after hypermetropia minus 3 to minus 30 dapt myopia and up to minus 10 dapt cylinder so ipcl definitely acceptable as compared to the icl and it is freely available and commercial and it's a cheaper compared to the implantable collamel lens so already i am encountered these things i'm not going into so take cleaning messages are faking intraocular lens implantation has been established as an effective modality for in correction of the amyotropia this technique afford the greater range of correction in the comparison of the keratorefractive procedure even also after keratoconus those who are stable you can love up with this procedure with the cxl so you the give the keratoconus patient breast character visual acuity unaided when you are not able to do the lasik for the keratoconus patient additionally superior optical refractive outcome following ipcl implantation easy learning curve even i have started the ipcl before my lasik surgery fewer side effects and a, and a very rarely needs any explants thank you very much thanks for your patience sharing and uh, on behalf of the oswb i welcome all of you for the 2024 uh, aivs conference and please do register in the city and we are well heartest welcome from the city join thank you very much for your patience sharing
so i think dr joya is not there due to health issues are there so her topic was uh, does when trapped how to overcome the things so already i think we are almost each one cover the each is dropped i mean whenever trap topic yeah ma'am I use usually cases of uh, I think say the right said this uh that would help you in one or two ways one is to brighten and second is to prevent the because here even if we are in the midway we can withdraw or let it turn a bit instead of flipping it in the eye when the lens is still folded you can put a spatula or a rod in exactly I 100% so, agree with you ma'am and normal even also normal Maybe. courses whenever we this i think is a sn technique whatever we inculcate shankarnathra technique because we are yes, using the yes. spatula you use a side spatula, instrument are, side instruments mainly spatula we are not using the forceps during the insertion because this this spatula guide you while you insert in the eye well also or even also i am talking about the eye well normal eye well and in the fake eye well also even if you, if it tends to be flip up that thing that time you should be stop that i mean just no don't push the things you stand still there let it be just delivered by its own because we are folding these things and it likes to tends like this but they have a tendency for to flip it off yes so for especially ipcl has especially a high that tendency so that is the only tricky part of the ipcl because that the flipping is but otherwise it is exactly John, what do you do if uh, if your icl flips and uh, you have to take it out so definitely that i show this thing this that patient that whatever the unfortunately so you post the patient for another day no i do the same thing i had i had one that is the incidents was happened it's the same icl the, uh, that, not ipcl i'm talking of icl you I, don't have a backup uh if you don't have the definitely that icl can be try, you can you try re, this you thing. reuse it after you use the icl that is not an issue for that because because icl is so costly they don't have the no icl is so costly they don't have the uh, this thing so they don't have the either or just like the unlike the ipcl they have the backup like this only but here actually we have to be insert the remove these things in advance it don't damage the part lens or biotic uh, biotic lenses or any other company apasami once have you used think, no no okay silver is there so the video which you showed at the flip the bevel was sideways the bevel was sideways if you was the video was that the cause for the flip when no, if you go back no, to the I, video, that yeah yeah I, this actually the, the I, whatever the i the problem of that patient problem, yeah. that patient actually i'm showing the video this, this yeah yeah this one just one second yeah yeah i'm just showing this thing just yeah. yeah so if you see the people is sideways so is that the cause for the flip even of things no, no. it is by its it's rotated by its own it No, no. I already rotated the by. I rotated prone my hand. I already prone it. Mm. Enter whole thing. One eighty degree rotated the thing. No, no, actually the thing is that it already half of the things is come out. Half of the things come out in the reverse way. And the what are the drawback? This is young girl. And she is hypersensitive, so I have done it in to- topical. Uh, this I thought that. This is one thing I just wanted to ask. It that do you do your cases only in topical, or you also put some uh, peribulbs sometimes? No, no. Most of the time it's topical only. But if the patient is very sensitive, most of the time uh, topical only. This girl is topical only. Topical only. Most topical of the time, only. topical. Yeah, because with topical. The dead girl actually. If I, now after these cases, I could I own self see the patient just before taking the patient. <laughs> and what that girl actually that's why i asking the whenever you are loading the ipcl you first load it then you enter the patient otherwise it will take 5 10 minutes after you are entering the entrochamber give the visco then you are loading and you are talking the patient over appearance something is going on that has happened with that girl only she was because that girl was very far from i think interior from the uh, behavior or something language issues are there she is over appearance if done in the topical issue, no multiple issues are there so after that i realized and i for a peribulb then Then yeah, that's why actually then in, after that I realize these things. If the patient sensitive, I give the injection for the peribulb. Peribulb or subtenue? Subtenue I don't prefer because cosmetically next morning the patient complain of pain and he says something we give injection rather give the outside the peribulb OT. It is not cosmetically next morning. Maybe subconscious or something is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
Uh, we usually don't do uh, a <coughs> PI because there's a central now this, hole. Uh, this uh, right? already eight holes are there, so no need for the PI. What else? Where uh, just like that ICL, you need to have to be do the your PI. ICL also had now has a central. Now a central hole, hole is yes, there, but there. but thing is still there. Prefer people prefer to do the one PI. That is what I was going to ask you. Did do you still prefer or not? No, I don't. I, I because I now know. ICL has also come with the central hole. The if no anybody has experience with APA, uh, IPCL here. Anybody in the audience? Uh, APA, uh, I mean uh, fakey Kaiwen. You can tell me, tell us, sir. Uh, does it have a central hole also? And you are giving us a backup. And you are giving us a free demo then, sir. Oh, Appa having? I don't. I not. I don't have an idea. I thought the care. So you are only... giving us all of us a free demo lens. To try it. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, okay, I will, I will be waiting for that. <laughs> so one, one thing is from Dr. Joyce talk. I can I just ask something, ma'am? Uh, suppose you are talking of the, we are planning for the premium arrival. Specifically, I think we had a discussion also. One of my patients, uh, I have done the IP uh, that um, panoptics for uh, this uh, working in uh, some of the high court, Raj, Raj high court. So that uh, I have done the panoptics and I, I had a over phone chat also with you. So it is absolutely perfectly the uneventful surgery. And then I'm talking the scenario. Then give us your opinion. What is what is what could be done for that patient? Then the residual, he has 6 by 12 vision because the residual spherical power minus 1. And there's a DBS surprise. And then refractive error. Refractive error was there. His, uh, I have done this. His son actually the keratoconus patient. Uh, but this was a patient of keratoconus. His son is a keratoconus, but he I have no no that I'm telling this same thing. But he is uh, uh, refractive uh, power was minus three or like that, but no cylinder power zero point five like that is minimal. It is not very significant, and I will power was approximately twenty uh, twenty one point five or twenty like that. It's very within normal limits and it's perfectly all no zero point five was there. And I was sitting on the and it's my practice routine practice. I was sitting always in the steeper axis. What is the IOL formula you generally use uh, to calculate uh, the the lens powers? This, this no, in the generally for this particular <coughs> for this we are uh, normal SRKT. courses SRKT. Yeah, so so basically I so I'll yeah. just like to tell you actually I did have a few cases where I used to you know uh, get a, a a little bit of refractive residual powers so what i have done now is i have moved on to barrett's universal two formula because generally in a multifocal patient if uh, number one it's very important to target emetropia we should not be targeting for a 0.5 myopia because now the glare and hellos are least when you are you have reached uh, when you are near to emetropia number two the effective lens placement in the bag is very important in the cases of multifocal and the anterior chamber depth is also one of the um, factors which tend, which you know determines the uh, residual refractive error and the Barrett's universal is the IUL formula which takes into account the AC depth also. So once I moved on to Barrett's universal, I am getting very very predictable results. So this is one tip which I can you know. Now give after you. that, actually, I have done the thorough. Uh, why what's going wrong for this patient? So I why he thought that maybe I will do the IUL exchange because it's a panopter but he said uh, I, I give the options he said or I can plan for the surface procedure PRK or like that I am planning for the PRK because that one day after PRK can be done so meanwhile he due to COVID he lo I lost the follow up I thought the patient has going somewhere else so suddenly he came after a couple of months back and he said even though he meanwhile he sent me some of the videos of the Rail Jodhuri the glaring or light blah 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 so I said okay fine it could be a delay because light time driving is there it's quite that's why sometimes we have those are habitual night driver we are using the VVT lens compared to the panoptics because now compared thing is that now he came for the other eye but this time I was perfectly alright and same formula you are Barrett's I were using and uh, the thing is that even though I have done the Barrett's as on SRKT also and both showing the same 21.5 or like that and that the same and it is it's my routine practice i always sit in the stiffer axis if it is 90 i like then superiorly if it is even also or if it is intermediate i send it every time i sit in the stiffer axis so this time also 180 something 176 the stiffer axis so i was sitting temporarily done and it was a non-touring ipcl so now this time 6 by 9 and 6 is fine so whenever i offer this patient one, for the one, surface one procedure he said no i am happy for that no, no, one thing. Um, 
first of all the patient that you took for panoptics there's a difference when you're doing idof or um, in anything in mono or uh, multi and then you're doing a <coughs> trifocal panoptics is a purely <coughs> trifocal lens exactly. so what i have uh, through my little experience is it is best to go absolutely without a cylinder when you are doing a trifocal if it is a edof it is a forgiving lens up to minus 0.75 so these patients are quite happy the edof patients because you are picking up a patient who would read at a distance okay so when it's left a bit myopic it's all right and but when you are doing a panoptics patient especially a patient who is working <coughs> in a high court <coughs> it is better to go for absolutely no cylinder if there is a bit of cylinder it not only will give you this myopia but again there will be some amount of aberrations Aberration. due to which the patient will not be comfortable thirdly the contrast sensitivity in a trifocal will always be slightly less Lower. okay so then again the, with the aberration and with this less of contrast sensitivity quality. the quality of vision for a person who wants to see at a distance because as i can understand a high court person will want to see at a distance regarding the night driving and low level then i don't prefer uh, panoptics or i explain to the patient the that you will have a bit of glare at the cost of getting a multifocality so there's a bit of difference in the calculation um, and i would like to differ with varun a little bit because i use simple immersion with srkt uh, in my peripheral center which i don't have a lot of equipments but i do adof and trifocals there with good result it is only over the experience maybe i uh, select my select. patients but it can be done it can yeah. be done so the technique is that see if there is a residual is there so we can top up it by the uh, your prk technique i think laser is the best PRK here right a, now i think like prk if yeah. it is one a max to max one a spherical one specifically spherical patient one. will pay dr shugata paul is asking that will the patient pay or will you do it free But you have for to counsel the patient free. that that needed the things and for the better wish your wish so you need not to wear the glove whatever the residual one so we can correct this much that so definitely there is a controversial issues are there but so that is one of the issues the, that could be the counsel properly <laughs> counseling is there the most he important can, uh, 6 to 12 he can see everybody and oh, he anyway has to do a lot of no no work. that's actually other when i have done he the now binocular is 6 by 9 and 6 earlier he, he had so already he had then 6 now i when I, once i done then i offer him to, whether i can go the surface but he said no i am happy with this and do i know now earlier the problem was that now i said oh, so good bye then i also good bye to the patient so and if you were plan and and just uh, i just want to share one uh, things about that varun uh, suppose we are planning for the ppc and uh, lens x or laser refractive surgery if there is a pcr is there <coughs> already we are planning for lens whenever we are planning for the lens x so we are usually premium or i will we are plan most of the time is opt for that's why we are going with the plan of this that is give you the whatever my understanding give you the more precise or optimized result now if there is inadvertently the pcr will be there in your cases so then how will you manage this like that simple normal fake the moment you have a pcr the femtogatrat gets converted into a normal fake so then you have to basically increase your incisions do a norm you know the vitrectomy and then anyways you have to place a 3p iuel in the sulcus that's why i'm asking then you have to change the iuel yeah of course you have to change the iuel yeah, you have to that's it. the so only thing earlier is you are planning for the suppose a premium iuel then multi p iuel or 3p iuel definitely the only advantage here is that you are very sure that you do have good adequate capsular support so your 3p lens will be very stable That's so it. you don't have to you know look for whether you have adequate capsular support or not you are very confident there that's about it so we have to be changed that's a, yeah, yeah. i will pick of course it is not you should not be rigid that or should not be hold our egos that i plan for that and it yeah, you should have, for the long term benefit i think so i i think is a good interactive session and thanks to all our all of our audience for uh, the special sharing and thank you all thanks uh, dr shudipta ma'am dr varun sir for the giving us the part of the i see and dr binay the late for the 
and there are another presentation and dr joya due to the some of the illness he could not come but i think it's a good interactive session thank you all thanks again okay thank you very much can i have a picture